everybody, this is Josh here at Green Beard at Green Beret. I am coming to you from my barn project, which if you follow me on my other social media, you would have seen me working on this. And what I tried to do is take advantage of animals' natural instincts and put them working together in kind of a more symbiotic relationship to, to kind of have a more natural way of raising them, uh, a healthier way of, of raising them, but also taking advantage of and leveraging their natural instincts for other tasks, you know, byproducts of of that relationship that are also beneficial. So kind of uh, in the interest of efficiency. So originally what this was, was an old horse stall uh, and everything was kind of open. It looked pretty bad. Uh, and you know, it was really not that well made. Uh, it was just kind of like a patchwork of things where people just took scrap material and uh, and kind of put it together. And it's, it's one thing to keep a large horse in. It's another thing to keep small animals like chickens and rabbits in and more importantly keep predators out because everything loves chicken and rabbits you know they, they definitely do uh, so you got to be kind of aware of that when i was putting this together so it, you know it's kind of the old horse door and what i did was you know i used this chicken wire um and then i was really careful to tack around the edges of the chicken wire and then on top of that i put some trim boards that are screwed into that so it's not just tacked up there they can't just rip out you know a staple or anything like that it's 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 really secure wire mesh that chicken wire is so uh and i did that everywhere and i looked for everywhere there was a gap in the wood like here and I actually put wood on the back side of that which i'll show you once we open it up so let's take a look inside it's got some secure latches top and bottom I'm going to invade their space. And what I want to do is eventually make this like a double door because I have to duck under here every time. Uh, but really, you know, this was kind of to get them uh, something to get into quickly. All right. So let's take a look at inside. We've got a chair in there, which doesn't need to be there. Again, like the windows so that I have good ventilation. I've got the windows open, chicken wired, and as predator proof as possible. So that keeps it nice and ventilated. They need that fresh air, you know, to be raised in a more natural way, not closed up, you know, in a barn with no windows uh, and no airflow. They need that airflow. Here's some of the rabbits. That one's Posey, named by my daughter, of course. And then the lighter colored one over here, this is Rosie. This particular rabbit breed is called our Argent Bruins. Uh, so they're a very large rabbit. Now, they're not the best for the you know, meat to bone ratio, but for our purposes, they're just fine. It's a nice, big, friendly rabbit. Uh, and these guys are young still. Go back in there, Posey. I gotta close the door. Thank you. Very cooperative. I'm gonna take a look at old Cheesy Poof. Cheesy Poof's a big old boy. The girls enjoy playing with him, but yeah, very, gentle, very friendly rabbits. They're really happy with these guys. Argent Bruins. Well, I've got them suspended kind of from the ceiling with nothing underneath, all right? So what happens is, you know, as they're eating their hay and their pellets and they're, you know, defecating, urinating, when all of their waste, basically, guys, come on, try and make a video. All their stuff drops down uh, and it goes here, to the ground and it gets mixed in with what I call the carbon diaper, all right? So what that carbon does is it actually like soaks up all of the nitrogen, the urea, all those valuable, you know, nutrients that are good for your garden. It soaks it into the carbon. So this is nothing more than wood shavings and basically waste from the chickens and rabbits. So while all that stuff drops down, including like, look, you can see where the, where the pellets have dropped down. Well, the chickens will dig through that. And in digging through that, they'll spread it around. So these are the ladies right here, all right? So they are uh, all sitting up high, but these are barred Plymouth rocks and they're about four weeks old. So these are gonna be our, our laying hen operation, but they have the secondary duty of being kind of pre-composters. What's up, buddy? You wanna say hi? Yeah, so they're the, the pre-composters. 
So what they do is, is inside in here on the floor of the pen, in this carbon diaper, if you will, everything that drops down from the rabbits, they kind of mix in and spread. And then once a year, or, you know, if it looks like they're not keeping up with it, I can come in here with a pitchfork and I can turn that over, you know, to keep that compost turning. Uh, but for the most part, you know, the stuff that drops down gives them incentive to go down here and scratch around on it and actually spread that for me. Uh, and that's kind of a pre-composting thing because the rabbit droppings that they drop, there's Rosie and Posey, camera hogs, man. So the, the actual rabbit droppings, I can put that directly on the garden without composting it. All right. But the chickens, however, are different. They have to be composted if you're going to use it on the garden. But them working together in this way, that allows me to basically build a carbon diaper to soak up and trap all that nitrogen and urea that they're all secreting and then use it later. Whenever it gets to the point, if I can smell anything like the nitrogen or the uh, urea, uh, if I can smell the waste, uh, then I need to add more carbon to capture that because if I can smell it, that means it's kind of dissipating. Valuable nitrogen is dissipating and it's wasted. Uh, but if I put that, that carbon in there to capture it, then I'm going to be able to use that as uh, a beneficial fertilizer for other food. You know, so that's kind of the relationship we have going here. Uh, so that's kind of the inside, uh, as well protected as I can get it, you know, uh, from the predators and uh, to protect these little guys because this is, you know, our, some of our food production system uh, and they're a very important part of our food production system. A couple other things they have in here. This is just the tub that they were originally raised in that's got some fresh dirt in it. Uh, typically we'll move that outside, but it was raining and we didn't want it to turn to mud. Uh, but that allows them to take their dirt bath, which is a natural instinct they have to, uh, to kind of rid themselves of parasites like mites and fleas and lice, etc. So we'll add a little diatomaceous earth into that mix to give them a, a, an advantage with that as well. Uh, but, you know, that is, that is their dirt bath and instinctually they'll do that if you provide them with the dirt. And then of course we have some galvanized trash cans that just have the feed in there. And that protects, you know, the galvanized trash cans, you know, protect the, uh, the food from rodents uh, because the, the rodents, the mice and squirrels and chipmunks and such will get in there and wreak havoc on your food supply. We can't have that. And of course they've got their, their run that goes outside that we open up in the daytime and we close it up at night. Uh, but they like to go out there, they like to get in the grass, uh, they can forage. Chickens are actually capable, you coming down? Chickens are actually capable of foraging up to 25% of their diet and allowing them to forage on fresh greens and insects really balances out the omegas that are found in their eggs when they start laying. So it's gonna be a, a great thing with these guys raised naturally like they are. Look at this one. I'm a wee bit camera shy. Yeah, so what I used for the actual roosts are just some maple branches basically that run the length and they're just sitting on slots so I can pop those out when it's time to scoop out this carbon diaper, if you will, later on. I'll show you real quick what I do outside. It's really windy outside, but hopefully you can hear it. But it, then of course we've got, you know, a, an electrified net fence and it's just woven and then it has tiny little strands of bare exposed wire and just these flexible fiberglass poles with a spike on the bottom. So it's real easy to move and change what access they have. The electrification of this net is not so much designed to keep the chickens in as it is to keep predators out. You know, a predator like a fox uh, comes up to this fence and kind of snoops around. Uh, once his little wet nose touches this fence, it'll zap him and he'll think twice uh, about coming to this area for a chicken meal the next time. So uh, it doesn't really zap the chickens that often um, and it's not enough to actually you know hurt them that bad uh, but sometimes you know the where there's feathers there's insulation so they don't typically get shocked there but sometimes they'll they'll get the get their combs will take a little zap every once in a while 
but you know they quickly learn to respect it and these guys and these guys once they get bigger are going to fly out of this thing all the time anyway so that's fun in and of itself is trying to keep chickens in here uh, and of course we throw whatever we want in there uh, for them to dig through they like to get after the bugs eat the seeds you know what have you uh, so basically this net fence goes around and gives them access to pasture once they wear this out uh, we would of course move those guys and you know they love being outside so much they barely ever get out of the run that comes directly out of the barn uh, but you can see them right now just getting after the bugs so that's kind of another added benefit of these chickens is that wherever you get after wherever you let them go they will eat every bug that crawls or flies in sight uh, so you know ticks your flies, uh, other insects, they really get after it. It's actually really good for their diet and it's good for their egg production as far as balancing out those omegas. But these guys are really, really efficient foragers. Uh, and I mean, they just get after it. And one of them will get a bug and the other ones will chase it, trying to steal it out of their mouth. Uh, but these guys have been handled since they were, you know, two days old when we got them. Uh, so they're very used to people, so they're very friendly as well. And these, this is a, a barred Plymouth rock, uh, also known as barred rocks, but it's a very good dual purpose breed, meaning they're very good layers. Um, and they're also good meat chickens. Uh, so it's a very, very hardy dual purpose breed. And it's one of my favorite breeds to have. So that is our chicken and rabbit operation. You know, the rabbits produce meat for food. Obviously, these are the breeding stock, so we're not going to eat them, but we will eat their offspring because uh, we're cruel and evil people like that. Uh, but that's what we have them for is to produce food. Uh, and that's kind of one of those things towards self-reliance. You know, if you give up control of your ability or, you know, if you give up control of your food system, then you're at the mercy of that food system. Uh, and that is the opposite of self-reliance. That's reliant on the food system, uh, which we choose to not do that uh, in as many ways as possible. So meat rabbits are great. Uh, they're very easy. They're very productive. Um, and uh, yeah, so looking forward to, uh, to getting some good meat off of these guys. Uh, not these guys, but their offspring. Uh, and then of course they drop Everything that they drop down, all of their waste becomes a value to the chickens who then, you know, in going for that waste, actually spread that stuff and kind of pre-compost what we've got going on here in this big carbon diaper. Uh, so uh, byproducts of that, of course, is obviously the compost is a byproduct of the system. Obviously, the meat from the rabbits, the eggs from the chickens. Uh, when the chickens are older and can no longer lay eggs, they're a good dual purpose breed. They'll make a good stew hen. Uh, maybe probably not these because the daughter's already attached to them. Uh, but, you know, by design, that's how it should be. Uh, but yeah, so meat from the rabbits, eggs and or meat from the chickens, valuable compost for the garden, insect control. Uh, there's a lot of great benefits to this system. So I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch uh, and uh, really enjoyed sharing this project with you. It took me uh, several days to retrofit this. What's up, buddy? Look at this one's got a bug. Hopefully you enjoyed meeting Rosie Posey and Cheesy Poof over there uh, and the hens. And we will do some more videos with those guys uh, as this project progresses. Uh, hopefully we can teach these two to behave. Uh, and keep things g-rated but anyway uh thanks again for your time appreciate the likes shares comments and questions put them below uh and make sure you join me on my twitch live stream every wednesday at eight which is gb2 unfiltered where i can actually talk about things that this platform doesn't keep me from talking about uh but anyway i don't know if i'm supposed to talk about twitch on here they may ban me from youtube for talking about twitch i don't know anyway Hope to either see you in the woods or see you in your barn.